Well, hello everyone, my name is Brian Clark and I'm here for AE Touch Plus and I just wanted to show you how to create this uh, kind of real world environment for your logo or title treatment, sort of like a network ID package that uh, you see a lot on networks. So let's jump right in. Now as you can see I've done some prep work just to you know, spare you the boredom of having to watch me lay all of this out, uh, but I do want to give you a glimpse of what I've done. Uh, all I've really got going on here is uh, I've got a Photoshop document with some different stock images that I've masked out as needed. I found these all on Stock Exchange at sxc.hu. It's a great place to find stuff. And I've imported those into After Effects, like so. And I've got a really simple camera move. Let's go ahead and go into a custom view to kind of show you what this looks like. But I've laid them out. It's pretty simple, but there's a lot of depth between the layers. And then I have a, uh, a basic camera move here, two, two keyframes, super simple. And through our lens, it looks something like this. Now you might notice I don't have a, a point of interest value here. And the way I got that was to go into, uh, with my camera selected, to go into layer and transform and turn off the auto orientation. I do that almost every time I animate a camera. It just seems a little easier to me. Uh, but I do find that that's a kind of underused feature in After Effects that uh, serves me pretty well. So now that we know what's going on, let's go ahead and create some leaves uh, to add to these branches. Now the idea is that we're going to create a small composition that will have our animated leaves in it. And then we're going to use this branch layer as a map in particular to tell particular where to grow particles. So let's go ahead and start that. We're going to create a new composition. This will be our pre-comp for our leaf, so we'll leave it pre-leaf. And we only need this to be about 250 by 250. You never want your particle uh, composition to be very large. It will take forever to render. And let's name our original comp just main to keep them separate. And so in our pre-leaf comp, we'll grab our leaf and drag that in. I will make this a 3D layer and let's scale this down. I'm going to zoom in here to full res and I'll turn on my grid so I can see the center because I want to make sure that this stem is actually right in the middle. So I'm going to hit A to grab the anchor point and then hit Y which is the camera pan behind tool which you can also find right here and because I have anchor point selected this tool will now move my anchor point without messing with the position of my leaf. Now if I didn't do it that way if I just tried to move the anchor point it will actually move the leaf see so we don't want that and then when we scale we know right where we need it to be. One thing we want to make sure of is that this leaf never leaves the outside of the frame because that will show up obviously in our other composition. So Now instead of just having one leaf I want to create as much variation as possible so I'm just going to duplicate this a couple more times and I'm going to hit R to twirl down my rotation and I'm just going to kind of set these at different angles something like that. I don't even maybe uh, kind of tweak the scale a little bit so they're different sizes so they don't look exactly the same. Pull that one down to about 10 or so and this one's just, I don't know, close to 12 will work. Now, one thing that's really going to make our final scene look alive, like it's a living, breathing scene and not just a bunch of stock photos sitting on top of each other, is to have each one of these leaves uh, moving individually. The way we're going to do that is to just add a little bit of a wiggle to the rotation value on each of these. So I'll go ahead and hit R to twirl down my rotation and we'll start with a Z. I'm going to use the wiggler which is right here and my layout. Um, if it's not there for you, if you click window, it'll be right there. So, so we're going to go into the Z rotation and I'm going to make sure my start rotation and my end rotation are the same. And then I will just select Z rotation to make sure that both of my keyframes are selected and I'll go to the wiggler. I'm going to set my frequency at something low 
Uh, we'll do about half a time per second so that it moves every two seconds or so. And I'll change this to about 12 degrees. I really want it to rotate fairly subtly. So we'll apply that and see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's not too much, and I think that's what I like about it. You don't want it to go crazy. Um, but just to give it a little more life, let's do the same thing on the y-axis, but with different parameters. So I'll make my two my start and end keyframe again. Select that. Go back into Wiggler. And just to change things up, I'll change this to about point uh, six, we'll say, and I'll make it about twenty. See how that works? As you can see, that's pretty good. Now it's obviously causing some problems so far with these static leaves, but that'll be fixed later. So let's go ahead and apply that to the other two leaves here. We'll uh, create keyframes for our beginning and our end for both the Y and the Z. And then we'll do these individually back in the Wiggler. And I'm really just going to change these each time just slightly so that they're not, you know, exactly the same. There's some variations. So I'll make this one about 11. For the Y, let's go 21. And I want to make sure that, at the very least, I want to make sure my keyframes don't end up on the same spot. So I want to change my frequency each time to be sure. And let's do the same thing here on Y. I'll just give it the same value. And on Z, maybe 13.4. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And if you saw that, there's a little bit. We got a problem right there where these two leaves pass through each other, back and forth. And we can fix that. Not too big of a, a problem. We'll just grab this top leaf. And uh, what I want to do is that's the it's the Y axis that's causing a, a problem. So I'm just going to select the Y rotation so that all the keyframes are selected, and then make sure that my playhead is directly on a keyframe by holding Shift while I drag. And as long as my playhead is there on a keyframe, I can alter this keyframe with all of these other keyframes selected, and it will move all of them at the same time. So. What I'm going to do is just rotate this a little bit so that it's not going to compete. And I'm just really going to basically tweak it until I find one that works. And it looks like it did. So we just have a few things left to do here with our particles. Um, first being that these are a little too similar in color. So just to give it some variation, I'm going to add a, uh, I'm just going to grab two of them actually, and add a hue and saturation effect. Just to kind of break these up, you know, obviously in um, in real life they wouldn't be all, you know, carbon copies of the exact same leaf. So let's try to give it a little, a little life. So I'll just drop saturation on a couple of them, make it look a little more realistic. That's a little nicer. And last but not least, um, as you saw in the animation, these were these appeared to grow out of the branch. And so we're just going to do that here by animating the scale really quickly. So I'll find a good spot, create a keyframe, drag it back to the beginning and change it to zero on all of them. And as we look at that, I think that's a pretty good speed. Obviously they're far too uniform coming in together, so let's just break it up a little bit by dragging these to a couple of random spots. All right, so our particle is finally finished. So we can jump back into our main composition over here. And we'll do two things. Uh, the first being that we need to drag our pre-leaf composition in here. And we can turn the visibility off because we don't actually need to see it. Uh, we just need to reference it inside of particular. And then the second thing we'll do is create a solid. And we'll call this particular leaves. Yeah, whatever. And okay. And then we will find particular here. And drag it there. 
Now what we're going to get out of the gate is just this default emitter which is absolutely nothing like what we need so we will change our emitter. Now what we're going for is obviously we want the leaves to only grow where there is a branch and so we're going to tell particular to use our branch layer as a map. So the way of doing that is change emitter type to layer and then change your layer to the branch layer. Uh, now one thing I should have done earlier is named these a little more clearly so I'm going to do that now. Um, I think this is the background so let me just rename this really quickly. That will be BG and that will be foreground and then we'll go back to particular. We'll start off with, uh, we'll start with this background just because it will be easier to see and so we're not getting a lot here but you can see there's a couple of little black dots here so um, we're getting something just not very many so we're gonna bump this up to like 1200 or so and now you can see we're getting a little a little more now the problem is if you'll animate this is that the particles are moving and we obviously don't want our leaves to do that so we need to turn our velocity to zero which is good but now they've disappeared well they're still there they're just the exact same color as the branch because this setting is telling it to use the RGB as our particle color. Well, we don't want that. Let's change, uh, change it to none so that we can see the white particles here. So now it looks like it's doing exactly what we want. There are only particles inside the branch. So we're looking good. And one thing I'm noticing already is right there this is my background branch but I've got particles showing up over in front of the foreground so I need to rearrange some layers here I'm going to drop the branch behind the foreground and then drop my particular layer down um, in front of the background but behind the foreground layer so right there and now when it passes in front it actually obscures like it should that'll save us some headache later so, now that we got this going where we want, uh, we just need to make our particles look right. So, back in particular, we can twirl this up and go into our part particle menu. And the first thing, we'll go ahead and change this uh, life of our particles to 10 because that's the length of our composition. We don't want any of the leaves to disappear once they've grown. And really, the next thing is to tell particular what kind of part particle we want. So, let's change particle type to custom. And with our new option here, we'll change the layer. We'll point it to our pre-leaf composition. And now we've got particles that are leaves instead of dots. However, they still look like dots because they're tiny. So we're going to have to go into size here and scale these way up until we get something we like. It's probably a pretty good size. However, let's make it a little more natural than that. And... We got a really helpful feature here, size random. Let's change that to about 20 so that our particles don't all look exactly the same size. Now the obvious problem here is that all of the leaves are facing the same direction and we don't want that. That doesn't look very natural at all. So the way we're going to fix that is to add a, a simple expression to the rotation parameter on our leaf. Um, if you don't use expressions, don't freak out. It's going to be a really easy one, trust me, because I don't know any hard ones so um, we'll do it right here we'll actually pull down um, our effects here go into particle and where's rotation there it is now the way to add an expression is just to hold alt or option and click on the stopwatch and you can type your script in here now all we need is to uh, to create a random value for the rotation each time a particle is generated so that each particle I have um, a different angle when it's born. So the way to do that is to just type the word random and then we'll have a value inside of parentheses and since this particular parameter's rotation is measured in degrees um, we're going to type in a degree value and I'm going to type 360 because I want it to you know encompass the entire spectrum and we're done. That's it. And now as you can see it looks way better. <laughs> um, starting to get some uh, natural looking leaves there.
and they actually grow just like we want them to very slowly right now but they grow now one thing I'm noticing as we play through this is that we've got um, some kind of we got a problem going on here where we've got some leaves just popping in out of nowhere there's one there's one <laughs> well the reason that's happening is because our time sampling over here is set to current time so basically it's it's starting our particle at say right now we're at one second four frames and so it's starting our particle at one second and four frames in the particle animation well we don't want that we want it to start at birth so that it will grow if we hit play now it'll behave like it's supposed to there we go now one other thing that's happening too is this is getting really dense really fast because we've got 1200 particles generating every second and uh, we don't need that many once we get to a certain point we want it to kind of die off so I'm going to animate the the value here of the particle emitter from 1200 I'm just going to drop it all the way to zero so that way once it gets to about this point we won't have any new particles being birthed so we're looking good now as you can tell things are starting to slow down a lot this is definitely going to happen with um, a lot of particles and this is actually kind of a large particle um, so you'll just kind of have to be patient with your system and now that our background branch looks so good let's duplicate that to our foreground branch so we'll just grab our particular layer and duplicate that command D I'm going to name it foreground to avoid confusion I've obviously had we've dragged it there above the foreground layer and the main thing I need to do um, is to change the emitter from background to foreground so now it will emit from this branch instead and you know what I'm gonna have to drop my resolution here so I can move through this a little quicker and I'm going to turn off the visibility on that background layer just for now so I got my leaves here on the right branch but my foreground needs to go above a few things, so let's move that up there. One thing I'm seeing is that, you know, as the camera moves, the leaves are already there, and we're missing that grow element. So I'm going to uh, open up particular again. I'm just going to move these emitter key keyframes. Uh, instead of starting here at 1200, I'm going to go ahead and make one more keyframe. That's a zero before my 1200. So that when I get to where I want I can control when these start to grow and I want them to move over here so maybe about I, mean, I want there to be some growth started so it's as we're passing there comes one there comes some more that's not so bad they're starting to kinda of grow as we pass now this branch should be um, it's a lot closer to the camera, um, but our particle size is really still the same as it was on the background. So I'm going to change that to, so I'm going to go to particle and just crank this size up quite a bit so that this branch looks a little fuller like it should. And it's going to make that growth a little more drastic too, so that'll help. First of all, I'll turn my background layer back back on and let's see what we've got so we're making some progress but let's go ahead and add some finishing touches some polish to this to really kind of put it over the top the first thing I want to add is a little bit of life to this camera movement let's give it a little bit of uh, kind of a handheld feel some movement so to do that I've already got my position keyframes here, and I don't want to mess with those, uh, so I'm just going. I'm just going to add a null object that I can affect. So I'll add null. I'm going to call it a uh, camera handle. Drop it above my camera, and I'll parent the camera by dragging the pip, pick whip to the camera handle, and then I will drop down the position on the camera handle and all I'm going to do on this is add a wiggle expression um, if you don't use expressions if there's one expression you learn let it be this one this has 
saved me in so many instances and I, I use it all the time. So I am a wiggling fool. The way to type out the wiggle expression is just the word wiggle and you're going to have two values inside of your parentheses. The first value, just like in the wiggler we saw here, the first value is the frequency. So it's how many times per second it's going to wiggle. So let's say in this case, I'll make it a really low, let's say I got 0.7 or so. The second is just going to be the magnitude of the wiggle. Uh, in this case, I don't want much at all. I want it to be very, very, very subtle. So I'm still going to give it a low value of about six pixels. And you'll see that it'll, it'll give you enough. So let's just kind of, let's preview that and see what it does. So as you can see, it's just a real nice, subtle kind of movement. It might be actually a little bit too subtle, so I'm going to bump it up just a little more, maybe uh, eight. It just kind of gives you that feel that somebody is holding the camera and, you know, has to breathe. Now the other thing I want to do to this camera to make it feel a little more like a real world camera is to give it some depth of field. Um, depth of field in After Effects is an incredible feature and it looks really great. Problem is it's kind of hard to work with because it takes so long to render that it's really hard to just tweak it and manipulate it and get it right where you want it. Mainly uh, that it's hard to get this focus distance just right. So I'm going to show you kind of a workaround that I use. Uh, to make sure that you can uh, just control this a little more efficiently. So let's uh, just scroll over here to where we've got some more depth here. And I'm going to turn off the visibility on my particles so I can see what's going on. And what we're going to do basically with is create an expression that will point our focus distance from our depth of field to a null object. So then we can move that null object to whatever position we want to be in focus, if that makes sense. And let's just jump in and do that. I will create, let's uh, just create another null. And we'll call this focus. Drop it down here by the camera just for ease. And I'm going to make it a 3D layer. And I'll go back to my focus distance here. Now the tough part about this is just kind of figuring out exactly how to do this because these are two completely different types of, of data. You've got a distance and then you've got actual position. So you can't just, you know, point the focus distance to the position because it, they won't be able to communicate with each other. Um, it won't be the right kind of information. So what we have to do is we have to actually find the distance between the camera and our focus object. And the way we do that is by typing this expression. We'll hold Option or Alt, click on the stopwatch, and you'll type length. And we're going to have basically two values here. And this expression just says find the distance between these two objects, or these two points. Uh, so the first point we'll type in just, this is easy, this position. And that just tells it you want the position of the current layer. So that's easy enough. And then the second layer is, or the second value is just going to be the position of our focus layer. So once our cursor is in the right spot, we'll grab this pick whip and point it to position. And there is your expression. Now I'm going to bump this up in quality here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Now you don't see anything yet because our aperture is too low so if we crank this up pretty high you'll start to see things change. This starts to fall out of focus. It's starting to look pretty nice but yet our logo is still in focus. Well why is the logo in focus? Well because it just happens to be sitting at zero which is the same place that our focus null object is sitting um, if we move the null object, it's going to fall out of focus. But see how cool that is? We can move this null in Z space, and now we can really control this depth of field really easily. I'm going to undo that. There we go. Now let's put this into use. I like where that's sitting, so we'll just leave that there. But say as this as this branch comes into frame, maybe we want to pull that into focus. So we'll just hit a keyframe here. 
And we could drag this manually and try to figure out where to put it, uh, but that's the whole point of doing it this way is that we don't have to do that. I can grab my foreground layer, hit P, and see that the Z depth is at negative 674, so I can type that in here, negative 674, and now it's perfectly in focus. I'll put another keyframe and as we land I'll drag this over as we land I want things to kind of slowly pull that logo back into focus so pull it over here and we know that's sitting at zero right so zero and we're there and of course now maybe I want this to be a little more dramatic so I can crank that aperture up just even more Now we got some pretty cool depth of field effects. Let me RAM preview that. So all that's really left is to finish this off with some color effects. Uh, and just to make it a little easier to see what I'm doing, I'm going to make a new composition. Uh, I'll call this color. And I'm just going to pull the main comp into this one. And then I'll put my color effects on top here so you can see what I'm doing a little. Because I've got way too many layers going in that other composition. So the first thing I want to do is this is kind of flat. Uh, so I'm just going to start us off with some general curves. Well, first let me do this. Let me turn this to draft 3D. Just It's going to temporarily turn off my uh, my camera effects just to make it a little faster. So I'm going to go to an adjustment layer here. This will be curves. And I'm going to add curves to the layer. And I'll just kind of make a standard S curve. I really want to just enhance the, the darks here and kind of bring the color out. That's already looking a lot better. And the next thing I'll do is I'll just give it kind of an, a gradient overlay to create sort of a vignette. It's pretty easy, simple thing to do. Ramp, oops. And I'll make it a radial ramp. I want this to be, actually I want this one to be white. This one to be darker. Maybe not quite so white. And start a ramp right around the middle. And I'll end it something like that. And I'll change this to overlay, my blend mode here. It gives me kind of a hot spot. Here's without it. And I'll just kind of pull that up until it looks good. Until I get some nice, got some nice dark edges around the corners there. And pretty good hot spot in the middle. I just want to be careful not to, you know, overdo it and blow this stuff out which is blown out right there but I think as it passes it just kinda gives it a highlight and looks good so so that'll work next thing I'll do another adjustment layer like a blur vignette I always like to soften up the edges well not always but in this case um, so I'll grab a blur here fast blur just get about a five or so and I will mask out the middle so just give it a circle something like that maybe a little off center I'll hit F to feather my mask and I'll crank this feather up to about 350 or so so it's a nice soft edge and then I will just flip the mask by changing this to subtract so now my center is in focus you can see if I zoom in, but the edges are a lot softer. So that's looking good. And one little trick that I've picked up, this will be my overlay mode. I just found kind of an interesting effect. It's another blur. I'll give it about a four or five, let's see, four maybe, yeah. And all I do is just add a blur to this layer and then change the blend mode to overlay 
and it punches things up quite a bit. Now that's way too much, so I'll set it to zero and kind of give it a little more. But I usually end up somewhere in the 30s. But as you can see, well, it's a little hot with the fact that I've got two vignettes on this. But there's something about it that just it softens everything without blurring it. And just gives it kind of a nice, warm, uh, soft, almost filmish kind of look. And I just like it a lot. So that's kind of a personal opinion thing. Now this is already looking pretty good. If you wanted to do like a nice, clean, bright blue natural look you might stop here um, but one more thing I like to try is just dropping some color over the top so one more adjustment layer I'm gonna call this four color and I'm going to add a four color gradient now that's ridiculous but I will take a yellow maybe some well, a little bit of kind of a yellow green wouldn't be too bad and then some orange I just want a really warm tone to drop over the top of this some oranges reds that kind of thing I'll change that to a blue actually it's gonna be where the sky is so and then I will change the blend mode to color and well we got a pretty cool effect there but that's a little too much for my taste so I'm gonna drop this down bring it back all the way to zero and as you can see if I just pull it up it just kinda of gives everything a nice warm tone almost kind of a retro feel I've got it at about 50 there now obviously depending on your your style and your tastes you might you might think the blue is way better than that you might hate this or you can just drop it down a little bit Sometimes it's nice to just kind of soften some of the bright blues there. It's really up to you. And I want to go back over here and turn my leaves, my particles back on just to see what all this color is doing to them. Now obviously you could just tweak all day long, but let's go ahead and just put the last one, and I mean it this time, we're going to do our little Wizard of Oz effect here, so let's give it a desaturate layer. I'm going to grab hue and saturation. Drop it on there, and I'm just going to pull this all the way down. And it's kind of bright, so I'm also going to add... No, I'll just make it a brightness. Let's see if that... And I'll pull the brightness down. Contrast up. There we go. So we get this nice old looking effect and I'm going to add noise. Just a little bit of noise. Um, say four. No, that's not enough. Eight. That's about enough. I don't want color though. I want it to look black and white. And what I'm going to do with this is just animate a mask so that this wipes off and reveals our color. Grab, so I'll just grab a ellipse, zoom out here, just cover too much ground. I'll go ahead and F and feather this about 350 again. I'll go to my mask path, set a keyframe. I think I want it to start about when the camera starts moving. And then maybe a little after that and land right before it lands so I go about here grab my mask and whoops and drag it over here Ooh. so if we ram preview that um, first let me turn my draft 3d off so we've got our depth of field back and I think that we are ready to render so let's just go through and turn on our motion blur for everything before we send it to the render queue even turn the leaf 
Motion blur on. And I'll just turn it on everything just to cover my my bases here. Now obviously I have piled on a ton of effects and a ton of different things here so my render is going to take forever. Um, my hope was that you know you might pick a few of these that you like and use some of them. You might ne not necessarily use them all um, but that you know you might find something that you can kind of add to your tool set. So here is our final render. I want to thank you for sticking it out with me. I'll see you next time and don't forget to tip your waitress.